houses are unaffordable. Needles pile up on the streets. The middle class has been displaced by an unending wave of low-paid illegal immigrants. More than 100,000 people are spending the night tonight on the sidewalk in California. But Democratic Senators Kamala Harris and Cory Booker have a solution. Smoke more weed. I am proud to formally announce that I'm signing on to the Marijuana Justice Act. It's the smart thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Two of the last three presidents admitted to using drugs. Congress people, senators have admitted to using marijuana. But there are other communities for which it's completely criminalized. It's, it's time they were not only legalized marijuana in our states, but expunged the records of those who have been carrying that burden of past convictions for too long. All because of their use of a drug that otherwise should be considered legal. Get high, it's a civil rights victory. Ethan Behrman is a California radio show host and joins us tonight. Ethan, great to see you. I just want to preface our conversation by saying that I don't think people who smoke weed should be in jail. I think the drug war hasn't worked very well, like gun control, banning something doesn't make it go away. Um, and I think that alcohol is in a lot of ways worse than marijuana. So I'll, I believe all that. I'm just amazed that now the ruling class is basically having failed to take care of its own people is telling them maybe you should smoke more weed and become more passive and less concerned by our failures. I don't really think that's an accident, do you? Well, I don't think that they're telling us to smoke more weed. I think that people are smoking weed, and I think uh, 80 years of reefer madness hasn't stopped people from smoking weed. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and as you already pointed out, it's, it's not worse than alcohol. If, any, if anything, there are numerous uh, potential medical benefits of marijuana that yeah. we haven't even studied because it's been a Schedule One drug. We need to get rid of that, uh, that, that classification, legalize it. Look, states like Colorado have generated over a quarter billion dollars a year in taxes. Oh. To support the state government. So, no, so that's part. No, why, you're making my case for me. And by the way, I think we should fully explore the potential health benefits of cannabinoids. I mean, I, I, why wouldn't we? We should. Of course, we should. And there probably are big ones. I'm all for that. But why shouldn't I be suspicious when over a hundred thousand Californians are sleeping outside tonight because people like Kamala Harris have done a terrible job taking care of their own people, and her solution is, hey, smoke more weed. So why can have more money in the tax coffers and you will be less likely to stage a revolution against my bad leadership? I'm not paranoid. That seems like an obvious bread and circus is ploy to me. Well, she's a pretty new senator, uh, so I don't I can't well, she I don't was, think it's just she's been feet, but I think elected statewide for a long time, as you know. Well, I mean, the attorney general, but, but, but what we have with the homeless population, there is a lot of care that is needed there. And if some of that revenue go, goes towards psychological care, addiction care, I think that's a wonderful thing. So if the people are already smoking marijuana or consuming it, eating it, edibles, whatever, CBD oil, let's legalize tax, regulate, get it out of the shadows. How about this? Oh. That defunds the cartels because who's bringing it across the border illegally? Those are cartels. You want to stop them? It's, I'm sure it's not that, it's not like that simple, actually, because cartels... Cartels are, you know, it's just, it's just a market, and when the price of anything goes up, if you can undercut it illegally, you'll do that. You see that with cigarettes, which are widely bootlegged because of high tax rates. So it's actually not quite as simple as you're making it, but here's the point. Let's not compare marijuana to alcohol. I agree it's less harmful. I don't drink. But let's not do that. Let's compare it to sobriety being aware and awake and fully experiencing your life and maybe fighting back against misused power. People who are high don't do that, let's be honest, and you know that. Well, but if they're busy drinking beer, is that any different? So if we're going to do but why morality, do we want more prohibition didn't work. No, but I'm not well, calling for prohibition. Just I'm just saying why I, I shouldn't I be suspicious? These people have failed their own people, and then they're encouraging us to smoke more weed. You don't see the connection at all. I, I, don't, I don't believe anybody is encouraging people to smoke more weed unless you have cancer and you're not able to keep food down during your chemotherapy, which is a wonderful side benefit of using cannabis. I don't smoke it either, Tucker, and, but I see the benefits uh, med medicinally for a lot of people who benefit. Also, again, uh, if it's one of those situations where people are already doing it and criminal elements are benefiting from it, bringing it out into the sunlight is the ideal solution. Yeah, the government should be getting rich on it. <laughs> That's what it is. Well, we have no idea rich, how to balance but, but the budget. Just revenue source. buy more weed. Oh, it's so depressing. I know you agree with me deep down, Ethan. We're out of time, sadly. Thank you.
Thanks, Doctor. Kamala Harris isn't yet suggesting that the masses go on opiates, but that's basically what they're saying. California is failing very fast, a state where only illegal immigrants and wealthy tech barons now feel welcome. With thousands living in close proximity on Skid Row, hygiene is always an issue. But with an official outbreak of hepatitis A, it's now a necessity. Kate Steinle was fatally shot in 2015 by a repeat felon and five-time deportee who was shielded by the city's sanctuary policy. The stench of urine and feces is strong. Welcome to one of San Francisco's newest tent cities. Authorities are certain they would have arrested 800 more immigrants, but Oakland's mayor issued a statement over the weekend warning of the raids. California matters. It's our biggest state. It's the leading edge of everything. Victor Davis Hansen is a lifelong resident of the state. He's a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. He joins us tonight. Ms. Hansen, thanks a lot for coming on. Um, you. you described the economic distribution of California recently as medieval. What does that mean? Well, that means that about 75 percent of the geographical area is inhabited by 25 percent of lower income people by and large and we have a coastal corridor from san diego to berkeley where we have caltech and stanford and we have about three trillion dollars in capitalized silicon valley companies and this is where all the policy is made and these people who make it the lawyers academics politicians are never subject to the ramifications of their own ideologies because they have such wealth and so California is a, a medieval society in the sense that we have the highest basket of gasoline sales and income tax but we rank 45th in school test scores 49th according to Forbes and in infrastructure among the highest kilowatt uh, rates in the nation uh, our gasoline tax is going to be the highest Ga cost of gasoline is the highest but it doesn't affect the people on the coast who make these regulations I mean where I work at Stanford it's 70 degrees or 65 degrees I don't have to turn on the air conditioning or the heater but where I live in the San Joaquin Valley uh, poor people have to go into Walmart because they can't afford to turn on their air conditioner so people in this medieval society on the coast, they don't believe in water transfers for agriculture and for poor people, but they surely do for the artificial landscapes in the Bay Area, whether it's Hetch Hetchy or the California Water Project. So that attitude is, it sort of reverberates throughout California, and it's a dysfunctional state because of that. There's the middle class, about four or five million people have left. We had about four or five million people come illegally from southern Mexico and we've had an enormous concentration of global wealth in a very small geographical area and you put all that